Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we are back with another law video. Today's law video will focus around the Chaos God Slanesh. So without further ado, let's begin. Slanesh, also known as the Dark Prince of Chaos, the Prince of Pleasures, and the Lord of Delight, is one of the four main Chaos Gods. He is the true embodiment of lust, desire, sexuality, greed, gluttony, temptation, hedonism, indulgence and excess. He is passion given form. He is pleasure incarnate. He is titillation. He is suffering. He is the sum of all mortal experience. Slanesh can be viewed as the most powerful chaos god. While he is the youngest, his power grows tremendously. For when there is pain and there is pleasure, he grows in strength. Some may only see Slanesh as a seducer and fulfiller of sexual gratification, but Slanesh is far more than that. Slanesh stimulates the imagination. He embodies experience. He is the patron of artists and poets. He serves as a great inspiration for all who would create and take pleasure from their creation. Slanesh worms his way into mortal imagining by granting success to one's labors artificially providing the fuel that drives the artist to brush the canvas and pen to parchment. For when one creates something beautiful, Slanesh revels in this and thus grows in strength. Of course, such sensibilities also extend to the physical. The experiences of the mind and the satiation of mental desires inspire deeper and darker urges. Slanesh creates new cravings by numbing the senses requiring his followers to seek out new pleasures, new and stranger experiences to achieve the same thrill that they first experienced. As anyone touched by Slanesh will know, eventually artistic pleasures do begin to fail, and his followers will quickly turn to physical needs to receive the same excitement as before. This may vary between sexual gratification or a more harmful sense. For what was once pleasurable becomes mundane, and his followers must look for more depraved acts to receive their pleasure. Slanesh is worshipped through the most perverse and dedicate self-indulgence, often in the form of great orgies involving every vice of mankind, from the most basic of sex to the most extreme forms of sex. As dedicants blooms into perversion, perversion becomes abomination, until all that's left is the all-consuming and throbbing urge to feel anything, anything at all. Now that we have talked in length about Slanesh's power, I would like to speak about Slanesh himself, or herself, or itself, as Slanesh really does not have a gender. Slanesh typically appears in a form which is male on the left side and female on the right with two sets of devilish horns growing from its head. Slanesh can, however, assume any form, male, female, hermaphrodite or asexual, but prefers male bodies. Unlike the other chaos gods, Slanesh possesses an unholy beauty, stunning and glorious on one hand, and utterly disturbing and unnatural on the other. His hair flows like pure rippling gold, pierced by two pairs of black horns that rise from his forehead. He dresses in a shimmering shirt of mail, fringed with velvets and jewels of untold decadence and beauty. In his right hand, Slanesh bears a magical jade scepter, which he claims is his most prized possession. His hold in the void of chaos is vast and luxurious, where followers and demons alike cavort in orgies and feasts of vile yet exquisite tasting food. Slanesh's minions are always erotic and strangely alluring, yet blended with disgusting mutation or disfigurement. Slanesh has a flourishing number of followers in the old world, as his principle is to indulge in every whim and vice makes him the most popular of the chaos gods. Slanesh's followers can be found in just about any corner of the old world from large cities and towns of civilized lands to even the Northmen of the Chaos Wastes. And there is a great number of Slaneshi warbands in the North, whom are especially feared 
for their excess practice of slave hunting, looting, and acts of rape and murder. Followers of Slanesh in the north tend to make great use of various drugs, especially hallucinogenic fungus and roots, to lose any fear of pain or getting wounded before entering a battle. The elves also had their own cults of Slanesh a long time ago, which were called the Cults of Pleasure, which actually led to their civil war, and thus led to the creation of the Dark Elves. However, we will deal with the Cults of Pleasure in another lore video. Interestingly enough, even a race as vile as the Beastmen have followers of Slanesh, which are normally called Slangors. They normally wear luxurious fur capes and looted jewelry, which is very strange considering what the Beastmen are. Now, we've almost come to the end of our lore video, but I would like to go into detail regarding his symbols, temperament, and scriptures. The most common symbol used to refer to Sunesh is that of a combination of the traditional symbols for male and female. Most of his followers avoid wearing symbols to him out in the open. However, they will dress in a sensual manner or wear jewelry with erotic motifs to show their pledge to him. Worshippers of Sunesh commonly wear the latest cutting-edge fashions, though modified to show off extra bits of flesh or accentuate the body in ways that push the social medium. In private rituals, worshippers wear robes that expose the right breast, regardless of their gender. Slanesha's sacred colors are pastels and electric shades, particularly azure, pink, ruby red and emerald green, often put together in a garish and contrasting manner. Slanesha's sacred animals include birds, crabs, snakes and salamanders. Worshippers are particularly drawn to animals that are beautiful and perfect in most ways, but bear some grievous flaw or gross mutation. The number six is sacred to Slanesh, and most of his rites include this number, or a multiple of it. And most covens to Slanesh will ideally have six members, or once again, a multiple of it. Of all the Chaos Gods, Slanesh has the widest acceptance in the Old World, as there are some who indulge in carnal pleasures without invoking his name. However, they still draw his attention, as anyone who indulges in a pleasure of any kind will draw the attention of Slanesh in some way or another. While Slanesh's followers mostly come from the upper class accustomed to living in excess, Slanesh accepts people from all walks of life. Artists, poets and musicians are particularly drawn to Slanesh in order to find inspiration for their work. Unlike the followers of other Chaos Gods, individual Slaneshi cults have positive attitudes between each other. Creating a large network for his followers to try new temptations, worshippers are accepted into his temple, regardless of race or nation, and a follower that travels to a new city is likely to find a new cell or two willing to take him in. Slanesh has the strongest presence in the largest cities of the Old World. The nobles of Talia, Estalia and Bretonia are particularly drawn to his creed, further spreading the cracks of corruption in the ruling class, and are dedicated followers of Sigma, Ulrich, the Lady or other gods, while in secret they worship Slanesh in the evening. More than a few highly respected nobles, merchant lords or priests are secretly servants of Slanesh. Slanesh has few scriptures on his followers, other than dedication to the pursuit of pleasure and hedonism. The longer a follower worships Slanesh, the more jaded he becomes, demanding even more disgusting and shocking perversions to stimulate his wary senses. Some of the known scriptures of Slanesh are as follows. The pursuit of experience is an end in itself. Look beyond that which is safe and customary to know the true pleasures and pains that inherit in Slanesh. Glorify Slanesh by awaking desire in all. Make no distinction between class or station. All are potential children of Slanesh. And finally, all pleasure brings honor to Slanesh. If it advances sensation, do it. And with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our lore video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, might I suggest subscribing to the channel as I tend to post videos daily. These vary between Let's Plays, lore videos, or just general guides on how to play Total War Warhammer, 
and there will be guides for other Warhammer based games. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, adios.